I don't like saying that as a jiu-jitsu guy. I want to imagine that jiu-jitsu solves all problems. You know, I'm squared off in an alleyway with a, you know, one dude, jiu-jitsu. A whole group of dudes, jiu-jitsu. I'm going to fight with my wife, jiu-jitsu, you know, right? And then we do jiu-jitsu. I just hit that button for theatrical purposes. Guys, I'm a security dude. I like guns and defense and stuff. However, some of my vulnerabilities, I need to outsource because I suck at it. And that's why I partnered with Aura. I can get online protection, fraud prevention, a VPN, real-time tracking of identity theft, antivirus software, and password management. Holy cow, that's a lot of stuff. It'll also fish the dark web to see if your information is being sold by shady, seedy, crappy companies. I just got real angry about that all of a sudden because I remember finding some of my stuff via Aura.com on the dark web. Oh, and this is big. They'll remove you from all these different listing sites where people sell your information. They block like 20 of them for me. Visit Aura.com slash WPS so you can start a two-week free trial so that you will see, as I already know, it's a good value. And now on to the video. Can I do the shotgun thing again? Yeah! My buddy doesn't want to go to Atlanta to date his wife because he fears like Antifa is going to get him. But I'm like, man, the statistical probability, I don't think my buddy is going to be uh, surrounded by a mob of I don't think he's really missing anything, but there's a few things in Atlanta like I want to shake up, I want to do that every once in a while, you know, maybe twice a year. But if something was to happen, this last weekend, Antifa riots in Atlanta, Atlanta PD, nothing like Oregon, immediately shut that junk down. But I wanted to walk through some things that you could do to make sure that you minimize bodily harm, be able to protect your families and make good decisions as protectors, defenders, right? But before we do any defensive tips and anything like that relevant to us protectors, I want you to just know your enemy. I want you to know how mobs uh, function specifically a group like Antifa. Notice as you watch these following clips, they're always ambushing, surrounding in numbers. It, it, it's the sucker punch written across a whole group of people. So as a defender, as a tactics guy, as a concealed carrier, as a tactical trainer, I immediately put myself in these crowds and I figure of like, all right, what would I do if I was there? And, and you know, the kind of brawler in me, the fighter in me wants to be like, man, I want to get in the center and I want to just take some jokers out. But uh, the, the more wise, prudent person in me that has actually kept, kept the wannabe Spartan alive for this long would be like, John, you're going to get jacked up. And, and, and the, the wiser head would actually prevail. I'd get jacked up because, you know, you engage with one and then, you know, six, eight are flanking you and then somebody hits you in the back of the head with a brick. To break it down real quick, this guy distracted while this guy punched the victim with hard knuckle gloves, then this chick sprayed him with bear mace. And then that's all there is to it. And so these guys are not squaring off wanting to go toe to toe uh, for a fair fight. And in fact, if left one on one in an actual fight, I think they would immediately turn tail and run. These are cowards. They are not, as Joe Rogan noticed uh, very well, these are not trained fighters. You get a mob of people. And then all of a sudden they have a mask on, which means they're ready to do immoral and illegal acts. That's why they're wearing the, the masks. They're going to sucker punch. And so uh, what I learned in the military is if you ever get in an ambush, what you're supposed to do is punch through the ambush. You don't try to fight your way out of an ambush. I'm a guy who's been in a near ambush and a far ambush, and you don't play with those. You immediately uh, hit the gas pedal and you get out of there and then you can flank, you improve a position and then you can do your own counter ambush. But the way you survive an ambush is you punch through it. So I would take that same age old military advice of tactics and say, hey, don't be in ambushes. And so I'd say the first tip I'd have for you guys is avoidance. Uh, avoid stupid places at stupid times with stupid people. In all these interactions, a lot of these folks could have even guessed, of like, yeah, this is probably not a safe area to be hanging around. Other times they can't avoid it. They work in that area or they're passing through that area or they're a journalist in that area or maybe you're on a date and it was an otherwise peaceful area that all of a sudden, like a powder keg, turned bad. You just never know. But I know this, as soon as you see the black masks come out, you need to bolt. Now, the human condition, and you can see this as soon as you ever have any fender bender or a bad accident on the side of the road, uh, people will get in a car accident 
not looking at the car in front of them because they're looking at the accident. You get in an accident because you're watching an accident. And this is exactly what can happen when people are affected uh, by bad players in a mob. You're watching what's happening and you think you're at a safe distance, but this cyclone of unpredictable violence all of a sudden sweeps you into it and you find yourself at the epicenter of a whole lot of trouble. You don't want that. And so what you do is avoid the temptation to do that rubberneck, that goosenecking where you're watching the accident, you're watching everybody do this and spray paint and throw bricks through windows. And you're like, holy cow. And you think you're safe. No, you need to run. You need to get out of there because there's nothing good that's going to happen there. Best case scenario, you get a front row seat to mayhem. But worst case scenario, you end up beaten or killed and that's no bueno. So have the tactical wherewithal to say, ah, I can't win a fight against a mob. I'm just alone. I got my wife with me. I'll bolt. What you really need is a whole group of police officers to be able to come in uh, and break it up. This is exactly what happened in Atlanta. Cops did cop things. They broke up the violence. They arrested six of the Antifa members and it was done. Antifa learned a hard lesson that day. I'm like, oh, Atlanta police officer, they don't play around. Let's go back to Portland where they're going to let us do whatever we want because yay, leftism. That's what they'll do. They'll go burn cities that allow them to do it. But me as a responsible concealed carrier protector, uh, I'm just going to break contact from that situation. Now, this is just the tactician in me speaking of like, hey, that's a fight you don't want to play with. Get out of there. But then there's also the moral component of it of like, well, wait, I'm, I'm a defender. I'm a protector. Maybe if someone gets hurt, I could at least be ready to render medical aid. I carry medical stuff on me. I also carry a gun in case I needed to protect life. But in, in, I'm not sure in that instance of like these people smashing windows, I'm not ready to kill someone to stop a business from losing a window when they have insurance. But if I see them trying to actually kill somebody, I'm ready to defend life there. Uh, if they're, if they're going to punch someone, I'm not ready to kill someone over a punch. Maybe I would get in there and go hands on to match hands on. But when all of a sudden one punch goes to a whole group of people, now it's lethal force. And unless you're ready to go full Kyle Rittenhouse on everyone and, and face the fallout and know that you may be potentially killed in that mess too, just recognize the mob. It is a absolute zoo. It's a mess and it's better to just not play with that. And I keep coming back with you break contact. Uh, you, you stay on the periphery and uh, you be ready to, to, to render aid, but you need a, you need a group to battle a group, not an individual stuck there. Who's just going to become collateral damage. That pains me to say, cause I want to be like, no, oh, do fight stuff. You know, now let's say all of a sudden that tornado of chaos catches you uh, on your heels and you're sucked up in the center of it. I would say probably the best thing you can do because you can't see all around you at any one moment is you don't speak to any one of them. Don't say a point, don't engage with them because the moment you start speaking to them, someone's going to come from your blind side and knock you out. So I can't even engage with any one of these cowards because someone else is going to blindside me. Right? And so the best thing you can do is you find yourself in that uh, epicenter as you protect vitals. And I want you to bolt, F find a gap and sprint. Don't walk out. Don't run out. Sprint out. And that's what I would uh, ideally want you to do. Uh, if you can't do that, then the best thing you could be able to do is hopefully uh, uh, put your back towards something, uh, some type of obstruction so that at least the damage behind you is minimized. And then you just need to go into a foray of hate, of groin kicks and throat strikes, whatever you need to do uh, to be able to dole out as much violence in as short a period of time as uh, humanly possible to defend off uh, an attack and then be able to bolt. One man can't, can't charge an army. Uh, it, you, I mean, unless you, <laughs> you can, you're just going to go out like a martyr that will remember you. Uh, in the hot gates, but you won't live through them. Another consideration I'd say is don't go down to the ground. Uh, don't just fetal out. Some people, when they're getting hit and beat, it'll be a natural tendency to try to get low. When you get low and you get off balance and you, you curl over in a fetus or on your back and you protect and whatever of like, man, they're just going to keep pounding on you. Do not go to the ground with any of these people. If you're a jujitsu guy, do not take one of them down. That's a terrible, terrible idea. Your jujitsu is utterly worthless for helping. I don't like saying that as a jujitsu guy. I want to imagine that jujitsu solves all problems. You know, I'm squared off in an alleyway with a, you know, one dude jujitsu. 
a whole group of dudes, jujitsu. I'm going to fight with my wife, jujitsu, you know, right? That was funny. My wife would smile, you know, and then we do jujitsu. Anyway, this got out of hand. Tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, but best of all, don't be Antifa. Those guys suck. Uh, they commit fascism while decrying fascism. It's awesome. It's just a logic fail. These guys suck. I think you should be able to take your wife out to dinner in a downtown city sometime. Depends on the city. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. But know what you're getting into, have situational awareness, understand the threat indicators, and understand what fights you should engage in and what fights you should break contact from and how, right? Like, share, comment, all the stuff that YouTube is not going to help us with anyway because we're hopelessly buried in their shadow ban. Big Tech despises us. Please subscribe to watchwpsn.com. And also, guys, I'd ask that if you'd like to support us, it means a lot. Thank you. Uh, visit our website, warriorpoetsociety.com. Really, really appreciate it. Guys, train hard, train smart, and stay free. We're living in uncertain times. We have pandemics, natural disasters, civil unrest, and even war. And you need to be ready for this. I'm EJ Snyder, extreme survivalist, 25-year Army combat vet. I'm bringing you my years of knowledge and experience to help you in this situation. Yeah, sure, you probably see me out there on Naked Afraid, Dual Survival, and First Man Out. But I'm more than just a wilderness survivalist. I'm a total survivalist. And that doesn't mean just being out there in the wilderness. That means here at home too. And we've put together the ultimate bug in and home defense guide. In this guide is critical information that can save you and your loved one's life. In this guide, things included are a get home bag, how to set your vehicle up to get yourself home. And when you get home, how to set that up for defense to protect your loved ones, all your supplies, and things you really need when trouble comes knocking on your door. This guide is designed for everyone, no matter what your background or your circumstances, whether you're living in the city or in a rural area, whatever your budget is, this is the framework for you to defend your home and be prepared for anything. Why are you just sitting there on the couch? You gotta start planning.